you're about to listen to our program Eng. We don't know why, however we are grateful you chose to. We do wish to inform you that the views, opinions and overall morality, do not necessarily reflect those of the station, interview guests, sponsors or musical entities. If you should choose to continue, and we sincerely hope that you do. Just know, we tried to advise you against these actions and we are not responsible for any damage done to your sanity, morals or ideals. Thank you. Here comes the terrible siren. With me this week is Corey. Hey. <laughs> you didn't do it. You didn't go, what's up, guys? That's your job. No, I hate that. I can't fucking stand that. Jesus. You got to practice for you two, bud. I don't care. <laughs> I don't. Um, and also with us for the first time joining the cult is uh, Jad the Taff, here on from now on being known as Jad. Hey, everybody. Okay. Chad, thank you, man, for coming out. Oh, no problem. I appreciate the invite. So, uh, Jad and I know each other through a mutual friend of ours named Rob. Uh, he runs Late to the Gamers over on Twitch. Uh, you can find him on Twitch and, and uh, Twitter and Facebook and pretty much anywhere that you could whore yourself out, just like me. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a whore. They don't call it whoring anymore. They call it hustling. (laughs) You can call it whatever you want. Here's the thing. I get invited because I'm in a lot of the the small business groups and whatnot there. And when they Mm -hmm. do these, like, festivals and stuff like that, why don't you bring your business out and do something? And I'm Mm -hmm. like, I'm the only product I have to sell, and I'm pretty sure there are solicitation laws. (laughs) That's why I refer to myself as a prostitute, because I am the only thing I am peddling. This is how you spin it. Yeah, well. Honestly. I'm I'm okay being a whore. I'm I'm taking it back, man. I'm I'm p- putting some respect on that title. You're investing in yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got a full show for you tonight. Um bunch of topics and stuff to talk about. First things first, I want to jump in and uh talk about the the interview that I did this week with Yvonne Mason. Uh for those of you that don't know who Yvonne is, Yvonne is an amazing woman. She is a bounty hunter, she is an author, she's a painter, she is a photographer she is an all-around badass woman and i've known yvonne for many many years and she was nice enough to sit down and talk to me about her life and her views on the world and everything like that so if you're a member of our patreon go to cult of Odd, or patreon.com forward slash cult of odd and you can uh, join up to be either a cult of We've also spoken to uh, uh, business owners and we just recently not too long ago Sorry, my throat was dry and I needed a, a sip of coffee. Um, we spoke to a guy named Anthony Butcher. And Anthony um, he was riding across America. Wait. Oh, no, no, no. What is this? <laughs> what? Definitely not technical difficulties. That doesn't happen here on the Cult of Honor. No, not at all. <laughs> I think the servers have an issues, honestly. Oh, on Tap Detroit? Yeah. Do we max out? I don't think we maxed out. Uh I think the server itself is having issues. Or my internet is. One of the two. Hmm. Streamer is connecting to server. Let's see. I have an internet connection. Yeah. Um, I'm going to kill the TikTok. 
think it might be due to the weather. Maybe. Know. It was uh, sprinkling a little bit when I was on my way over. It was raining when I was on my way. We um, might have to pre-record. Pre-record? Oh, a first. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. See, it's my fault. I'm bringing the bad juju. No, I'm sorry, I guys. I don't I'm know sorry. what's going on. Um, I am having a hell of a time trying to connect to the uh, server. So who was the businessman you were talking about that you just interviewed? It wasn't a businessman that I just interviewed. Hold oh. on. I'm trying to make sure that we are okay. I Got think too much going on. So that so your uh name Tad, is that the name you were uh, talking about off air from the video? Hmm? You Jack? said you rebranded Jack. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it went from uh I'm KMW kill. gaming to Jad to Tad. Okay. So from Elevator Action Returns arcade game which is one of my favorite games yeah. so i killed I was, the live for i was gonna ask what type of games you uh like to play uh i like to play because i play games. everything yeah i literally any game that it catches my eye that even looks fun i'll play it for a long time i gravitated towards like competitive uh first person shooters mm-hmm. that's really what brought me into it and then rts's um i've kind of like chilled back a little bit because i work nights so mm-hmm. uh, i've been playing things like stardew valley and just chill games oh, nice. that i could you know like relax to <laughs> um well uh i'm kind of like how do i put this i feel like when i bring up the subject of games that I just know too much and have played too many. Because there's no such thing. I, so the very first my brother's ten years older than me. Yeah. So the very first console I've ever pl- ever played was a Atari twenty six hundred. Me too. We had Qbert, uh baseball, Berserk, and E. T. Nice. <clears throat> and we still have all of the stuff today. Because really? I kinda turned into a collector. Yeah. <laughs> so after that we ended up getting the NES and then Master System, Genesis, and Super NES. I still remember when I got my Genesis. I had a birthday party at a place called Major Magics. Mm-hmm. Um, and they brought the box, and I unwrapped it, and it was a Genesis. I was so hyped oh, and, man. like, so stoked. But the only games I had for it, my first games I had for it was Sonic 1, because it came with it, yep. and Altered Beast. Yep. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I hated Altered Beast at the time, but I was just too young to appreciate I, it. I, being the same age, I get it. Um, I, I had a lot of Sonic when we got our Sega because yeah. we went through that same progression. My brother's older. Um, and then we were at a cousin's house or something that got like a Corvette, you know, top down. We'll mm-hmm. go drive and play, get some ice cream or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Fuck, I hated that. I was like, let's just <laughs> let's just play the video games. You know, they had Altered mm-hmm. Beast. It was brand new to me. I was like, wow. <laughs> um but I was trash at it. Like, absolutely fucking terrible. Okay, I think we're good. Um, and we never got that, but we ended up picking up uh, Landstalker, which was Sega's oh, yeah. response to Zelda. Mm-hmm. And it was huge. Like, yeah. I loved it. And we never... We it's got, a good game. We got yeah. to the end and uh, never beat it. Well, so. I always tell people, like, yeah, I grew up with bad games. Yeah. So, I'll give you an example. My SES. I Remember, had, don't look at people. I had, <laughs> ghouls and, I had ghouls and ghosts. Hell yeah. So, well, super ghouls and ghosts. Pit fighter. Um, Shaq Fu. Like, I had Shaq the, Fu was I a had, great game, though. Uh, was it, though? It was play, for the time. <laughs> I didn't play Shaq was Fu it until... Though, because uh, Shaq Fu was out, but so was Killer Instinct. And that was a much better game. It <laughs> came with the was... Killer Cut CD <laughs> that you just rock out to. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. My brother and I got a Sega <laughs> CD one year, which mm-hmm. was dope, you know. Uh, it was just before PlayStation came out, and there was, like, a, we only had one game, and it, you had to go, like, around a mansion and set traps for intruders. Night trap. Night trap, yeah. yeah. Night trap. And there was, there was if you set traps in a specific order, you could mm-hmm. make it to the bathroom and catch, like, a titty pick. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we really? kept trying to do it, and we couldn't get it, like... <laughs> But he was like, this is a thing, Corey. All right. I was like, let's go. <laughs> Back on track. So earlier this week, uh, or earlier um, this week, I interviewed Yvonne Mason. Uh, last week, I uh, interviewed, actually, maybe two weeks ago now, uh, I named, interviewed a guy named Anthony Butcher. And Anthony is uh, a dude from the U.K., uh, and he was started in New York and was bicycling across America for multiple sclerosis. 
and That's awesome. Um, he recently on Wednesday he he reached his his goal after I, I want to say it was either eighty six days or sixty eight days. One of the two. I don't know. <laughs> um, but he he crossed the entire United States. Um, in the time that he was pedaling, he only had to pay for lodging seven days. The rest of the time, he was either staying with complete and total strangers or friends of friends. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, on Wednesday, he made it to his destination, which was San Fran- the San Francisco Bridge, so Golden Gate Bridge, um, and ended his, his trek. Um, he raised, uh, as of right now, he has raised almost 30,000 pounds for uh, the MS Society. And like people are still donating because now, even though it's after the fact, they're they're impressed at what he was able to do. We were able to do an interview with him uh, uh, before he made like a big part of his trek, um, basically up uh, the Rockies, I think it was. Um, and uh, he is he was delightful to speak to. You know, he he had such a positive outlook on things. Uh, he's a big proponent for mental health. Um, and the reason that he was doing the ride is because his mother has severe MS. And he uh, know, he knows how, how hard it was for him growing up with her or for her having MS and whatnot. And that the MS Society did a lot to help him and his mother and he wanted to give back and so yeah he he crossed the entire united states um if you want to go find it you can find it on facebook it's antony no t or no h in it um across america we'll put links with it and everything and the interview is up on our patreon as well um and then speaking of interviews going to our patreon early uh early next week so uh monday we'll be sitting down to talk to um ian mcconnell who is a musician that has started getting a lot of popularity on tiktok and other social media he's fantastic we have one of his songs in the playlist tonight in fact we have his entire album that we've been given permission to play so we're playing one song each week until we get to the end of the album the album is called season one and the songs are listed as episodes so uh episode one was adult uh, episode two we're playing tonight, which is called Friends, and we'll keep going through the list. And he, he's got, he's got, he he's in his early to mid twenties. He's got a, a a unique perspective on the world, and it comes through in his music. Uh, somewhere between pop and rap and 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 whatnot, um, but he, completely delightful. I I spoke to him Thursday for the pre interview chat and he's just re- a really nice guy so I'm, I'm looking forward to doing the interview with him um and then of course we've got yvonne mason and then starting this next weekend i think i have an interview every saturday with independent filmmakers so uh, a bunch of people you'll probably not know beforehand but you'll want to know afterwards because uh, horror movie filmmakers there's a uh, uh one guy that does like radio theater and stuff like that. Like it's, I, I found a really interesting group of people. Plus, I'm I'm working on other interviews um, with people that I'm interested in. There's a a writer that I really like. Um, his name is Ailey Martinez, and I've contacted him about doing an interview. In fact, I just recently bought uh, one of his books off Audible. Which segue? If you use our code, and I'll put a link with it um, with this show. You can get 30 days free of Audible um, by using our link. So uh, I'm I'm a big fan of Audible. Um, I, I because of everything that I have to do, I don't have time to sit and read, and I'm an avid reader. So at least this way, I can toss on an audiobook and graphic design or web design or video edit or do whatever I have to do, and still get my my reading fix in. That's what really got me into Audible when I was at Comerica. Um, cause I was doing it, you know, so I'm sitting there using both my hands, working on a computer or moving around the building. And I had a bunch of it coworkers that were like, you gotta try it. You gotta try it. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. But it was really good. Like <laughs> all some of, of the books, some <laughs> of the Audible. books, it just really depends on who's reading it to you. You know, Audible has gotten me through years ago when I used to 
delivery drive. You know, I would drop off, deliver flowers to people. Yeah. I'd be in the car like 90% of the time. <laughs> so Audible was perfect for when I wanted to read books. Yeah, and absolutely. They just, I just play it. Well, and the cool thing is, is like uh, Audible isn't just for books. It's for podcasts mm-hmm. and self-help stuff and like all sorts of things. There's even radio theater there on Audible. So like I know everybody thinks, oh, audiobooks, but like, there's so much more. And like I renewed my membership for Audible. Um, so I, I'm, I'm good for a while. I'm getting my one free credit a month. You know, and like I said, I used it to buy one of my favorite books from Alien Martinez. It's a book called Monster. It's about a a cryptozoological exterminator. So Mm. like uh, the Chupacabra or you have problems with Yeti or Mm -hmm. Bigfoot or whatnot, you call this guy and he comes and captures and, and, you know, removes them and. Nice. Safely, just like I'm gonna go remove the yeti, yeah. <laughs> not well, not kill it. So he he has um, he has something wrong with him where every morning he wakes up a different color, and I don't mean he wakes up black one day mm-hmm. or he wakes up white one day. He wakes up green and like gold. a chameleon kind of. Yeah, yeah. but um, he keeps a, a ledger of what each color is because each color imbues him with a certain ability that seems to come in handy later that day. Oh, nice. So, like, one day nice. he wakes up and he's completely indestructible, and then he ends up going up against this big fucking monster, and, and he, he's fine. Uh, some days he'll wake up a different one color, and he'll be immune to poison mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It's a really, really fun book. Um, and uh, I, I used to have the physical copy of it, which I think I still do somewhere. Um, but, again, with not having a lot of time to sit and read, Audible comes in handy. So, um I believe the URL is audibletrial.com forward slash cultivad. Um, but I'll post a link with the show and everything and whatnot. We've been posting about it. Go use our link. Go get 30 days for free. You know, uh, you get one free credit a month. So when you sign up, you'll get one credit. So you'll be able to download a book right away. I think it's neat. Moving on. Have you seen the Rob Zombie Munsters trailer? No, I have. I scrolled, right, I past scrolled right past it. I didn't look at it because I didn't realize they were doing a movie. I thought it was supposed to be like a revival of the TV show. I didn't know they were going to do a movie about it. So my initial thoughts was like, I don't know if I just want to if I want to see that. See, um, so a lot of people have been shitting on it because it looks too cheap and cheesy. And I'm like, but it's the fucking monsters. Yeah, it's all the monsters. Yeah, to. the monsters are supposed to be cheap and cheesy. I've watched the original. Yeah. You know, so. Everyone's like, he's made this big Hollywood movie and, you know, it looks like it was shot on, like, a, a, a cell phone in someone's back room. And I was like, oh, that's how it's supposed to look. Okay, look. I've seen a few movies recently that were big budgeted, had been, you know, studios spent tons of money on. That just looked like crap. Which ones? And the, <laughs> Tell us. One specifically, that the most recent Resident Evil movie. Oh, yeah. I swear at one point I saw the green screen, like, wave behind <laughs> the guy. <laughs> and, like, out of, like, I don't care what they did with the characters and stuff like that, but when I'm watching a movie that's, like, technically bad. Yeah, it takes I, you out of Yeah, it. I don't want to deal with that. Who left and, their Coke can <laughs> in the Old West? <laughs> I'm a big fan of Rob Zombie movies. <clears throat> He's a great director. He's a great artist when it comes to music and things like that. He's a great person. They're hit or miss for me. Really? Yeah, like not all of them. Like House of a Thousand Corpses. I liked House of a Thousand yeah, I Corpses. Liked it too. I did not like Season of the Witch. Yeah, I didn't like that one. <laughs> it, it, it was slow and boring. I also wasn't a big fan of The Devil's Rejects. Really? Yeah. I, I liked The Devil's Rejects. I liked, I oh, no, I'm sorry. It was Three from Hell. That's oh, the one. Okay. I, I like wasn't that one. Fan. I'll give you that one. Yeah, it, there was something. Hello, Mr. Brown. There was, I don't know what it was about uh, Three from Hell, but it just it didn't pull me in the way A House of a Thousand Corpses did. And I, um, Devil's Rejects was kind of shaky, but I stuck in there. And when he announced Three from Hell, I was, like, super excited because, like, okay, this is the, the magnum opus of the, the Firefly family. And I don't know, man. Three from Hell just fell flat for me. I don't know what it was. I didn't see Season of the Witch. But I, I've seen the other stuff. So. Uh, Rob's actually listening right now, and he says it doesn't have the kids in it, and that's why I don't want to watch The Munsters. Oh, really? It's an origin story about Lily and Herman. Oh, okay. And them coming to America. I suspect either the kids are in the latter third of the movie... 
Or like Lily becomes pregnant with uh, uh, Eddie. Is it? Don't look at me. Yeah, I, I think don't it's know. Eddie. Eddie must be. Yeah. yeah, I believe uh, Lily becomes pregnant with Eddie towards the end of the movie. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. Are they probably? They might do like a time jump, a time skip, or something. Maybe the movie? I, I don't know. I mean, but, time skips work when well, done well. When, yeah, when done well. <laughs> so, um, but it, it very much from what the trailer sh- shows, it seems to be a. An origin story for Lily and Hermit, which we never really knew. They just they, they they mentioned it here and there throughout the show, but like I think it would be cool to see how they met and you know things like that. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna watch it regardless. Yeah, I will too. You know, and we'll see afterwards. Like I said, Rob Zombie movies are hit or miss for me. Um, loved the Halloween remake, hated Halloween two, the second one that he did. Um, loved oh, no, House of a Thousand one. Corpses. Mm-hmm. Felt okay about Devil's Rejects. Did not like Three from Hell. <laughs> one of my favorite Rob Zombie movies, though, is one that is universally shit on by everybody. The Haunted World of El Super Bisto. It was the <sighs> animated movie that he did. <laughs> I feel you're one of the universally <laughs> shit on it. I don't... I just... It wasn't for me. That's all. I, I don't think I've seen that like, one either. I don't think it's bad. It's just not for me. So, like, okay, I liked stuff like Felix the Cat and the really weird Mm -hmm. animation and stuff. Stuff like Cool World and and whatnot. And it was right in the vein with that, you know, with Felix and Cool World and stuff like that. Plus, uh, come on, Velvet Von Black, she's the kind of girl you think about with your wiener in your hand. (laughs) (laughs) Like, the music in it was great. (laughs) Does it have musical aspects? Is that? Yes. Okay. Um, one of the, my favorite lines from the Velvet Von Black song uh, uh, is, she is more addictive than a mountain of crack. Velvet, Velvet Von Black. <laughs> it's just, it's great. <laughs> it's not supposed to be serious. Mm-hmm. It's way over the top. Tom Papa plays El Super Bisto. He's this egotistical, luchador, super, like, spy, you know, type character. It's just crazy fun. And, of course, then you have, uh, of course, because Rob puts uh, his wife in everything, she plays mm-hmm. a character um, and the robot that is sexually obsessed with her, which is voiced by, I believe, Brian Posehn. Mm-hmm. So, like, the movie has a good cast. Get stoned. Like, just fucking eat as many edibles as you your stomach can handle. <laughs> Put the movie on, sit back, and just enjoy the ride. <laughs> you know, probably because I watched it when I wasn't stoned. Yeah. So I will definitely recheck it out. Yeah. Watch it high. <laughs> <laughs> there are certain movies that are yeah, so much yeah. better high. Yeah. Specifically like the drawn together movie that came out all those years ago. Oh yeah. Much better while stoned. Much better. So, um, uh, there's a movie called waking life. That's like that. And it's like mm-hmm. it, they filmed it and then animated over it. Kind of like a scanner darkly. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. Yeah. But it's wild, man. Um, and it's really like existential too. So it's like a really deep movie. And mm-hmm. then like if you're tripping, not just stoned. Stoned helps. <laughs> <laughs> but like if you're tripping, holy fuck. <laughs> and then I watched the first three episodes of the Resident Evil series this week. Yeah. Um, I had to stop myself because I wanted to keep going. And I know there's only eight of them. And I'm like, all right, hold on. I don't want to shoot my wad and be sitting there like, oh, now I don't have anything to watch. Mm-hmm. What did that come out on? Uh, Netflix. Netflix. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's How actually do I pretty know well about done. This? No, it is. It's really, it's really good. It's way better than some of the movies they've put out. Look, that last Resident Evil movie that came out was just the absolute worst. <laughs> just a <laughs> like, big middle finger to I the have, fans. I saw two terrible movies, and that was Green Knight. And the most recent Resident Evil movie. Those are terrible. I don't even know now, what Green Knight is. Be, I saw previews yeah, for the Green Knight. Yeah, you're better off. Okay. Not. Well, yeah. actually, no. You Watch it if you get the chance. Night <laughs> Just, with, Night with Misery an N Loves K. Company. Hmm? Night with an N or a K? K. Okay. Misery Loves Company. So please, if you right. get a chance, I love watch shitty it movies. and let me know like, if I love you thought it was considered, if it can be considered a movie. Okay. That's all I want to... Is that the one with the green screen flapping? <laughs> no, no, that's Resident Evil. Uh, the Green Knight, that movie, it's so pretty. And the shots are so well done. But the it's movie just, itself just sucks. Just, who wrote this? Like, who wrote that? Who Cocaine! Wrote that? Like, 
come on, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so bad. That's great, though. But no, like the Resident Evil series, I didn't have high hopes going in because I know how bad they are. Like, I haven't seen a lot of the Resident Evil movies because, mm-hmm. like, the first couple of them, I was just like, uh, okay. All right. Okay, but all right. So the Resident Evil movies, sure. I'm a, I'm a fan, all right? Even as shitty as they are. But they also have, like, animated Resident Evil movies, which are fucking Ooh, dope. Those are okay? really good. Yeah. Yes. Those They're are really good. so much good. better. Well, They're so for those really that don't good. know, the series that Netflix just released takes place after the games. Yep. Um, uh, everything is, is canon. I don't know. I didn't know this was a thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> everything <laughs> seems to be canon. Like, I don't want to give, I don't want to spoil anything, but... As somebody who is a huge RE fan from the very first game and onward, like, I still play the GBA Resident Evil games. <laughs> like, I know a lot of people who are, like, diehard fans like me are going to go and be like, this isn't Resident Evil. Why is this, this, and why is that? Look, okay. This fucking show is not... more Resident Evil than some of the movies have yeah, been. Yeah, absolutely. That's not canon. That's not canon. What but, is that? Well, the thing is, like, <laughs> it's actually, a, most even of it is. if they left the RE name on it, it's still really good. Yeah. I'm like, I suggest watching it. I really do. Yeah, it shows that um, corporations never learn their fucking lesson. Yep. You know, and that they keep fucking up, making the same goddamn mistakes. Um, Goddamn terrifying in a couple of parts, just don't too. Expect, uh, just don't expect uh, Resident Evil 5 to be canon in this. So that's all I'm saying. The liquors well, look okay. good. Don't, don't expect Look. Resident Evil 5 to be canon in this because they're not. It, it's definitely not. That's that, fine. <laughs> that was the big thing is, like, the liquors mm-hmm. looked good. Yeah. Like, for, for a movie. Creepy. Yeah. Very creepy. Um, I was watching it with my wife, and she's like, this looks like crap. And I was like, what do you mean? She was like, it, it looks funny. It looks off. Why does it look like that? And I was like, um, well, it's shot like a foreign movie. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it very much has that foreign film look to it. That's why it looks funny. And I was like, it takes place in, in South Africa. So that would be why it has that that look to it. Like, I don't know how to describe <laughs> it other than that foreign movie look. And I think at least some of the movie like that fans out there. Like 28 Days Later yeah, look Yeah, know it. exactly yeah. what I mean. The color grading, the way the camera moves, the shot setup and stuff like that. There is there's something inherently un-American <laughs> about <laughs> how movies made outside of our borders look or outside of our production houses. And it, it was fine. I just want to also it's say... It's the music, Rob. That's like, why. I also just want to say one more thing uh, about the RE series. Everything that you're concerned about, like if you've seen the trailers, there's an explanation for everything. Yeah. So I suggest like just not deciding not to watch it just because how certain things are changed and how certain things are looked. There's an explanation for it, and they give it. So just give the series a shot. Rob, do me a favor and bounce over to tapdetroit.com uh, forward slash chat room right. so I can One of the Resident Evil games keep track of everything. South Africa, I think. Yeah, Resident Evil 5. 5, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but, right. <laughs> you know, obviously that's not canon. I be- if I'm not mistaken, I think after Veronica and before is canon. One of, one of so, the movies, there was the a part I really hated. To be canon, though, which, oh, from what yeah, I was that's true. Yeah. Uh, but I also read all the graphic no- I mean, I also read all the novels. Yeah. Oh, are you just trying to prepare us for the fact that there's no big mommy milkers? Ah, look, I would be very disappointed. No, I'm just joking. Because <laughs> Lady D can squash me uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just go on and get it over with. The shame. The shame. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to our first break. You're going to get songs from Ian McConnell, um, Bliss My Heart, and Red. Uh, Ian McConnell's the, the guy that I'll be interviewing on Monday. Bliss My Heart is uh, it's a song featuring Eric Jake of Wild Street. And Red is a local Michigan rapper, um, and uh, I really like his music. So when we come back, we're going to do a brand new segment called The Best Thing Ever This Week. So stick around. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Cult of Odd on tapdetroit.com. Now it's time for our Patreon shout-out. Big thanks to C. Wheezy, Bryce Rogers, Justin Burnside, and Zaldor of Zaldor's World Podcast for becoming a patron. Welcome to our Holy Mother and the Throne She Sits Upon, who have joined the Cult of Odd Plus. We hope you enjoy, our long, uncut and girthy. 
per episodes until you're fully satisfied and left shaking from laughter. For everyone else, you can join our Patreon too. Just head to patreon.com forward slash cultivant. Become a patron and reap the benefits today. Are you tired of incense that stinks? Motor City Candleworks is Metro Detroit's number one source for premium handmade incense, as well as hand sanitizer and now massage oil, with a wide array of scents inspired by Michigan cities and attractions. You're sure to find a fragrance that'll keep your love of the mitten burning all year round. Head to MotorCityCandleworks.com and order yours today. And make sure you find them on Facebook, too, for all of their upcoming sales and events. Motor City Candleworks. Michigan handmade scents that just make sense. The smell. The kind of smelly smell. The Cult of Odd w- w- welcomes you to adorn yourself. <laughs> your walls and even your loved ones with our high quality structural as well as body adornments for you to share our love with the world we have all manner of material objects for you to covet from posters to clothing to bean juice mugs and even stickers give your love to the cult of odd today then you can force that love onto others they want it they need it and they won't survive without it Head to our little shop of oddities now and support the cult with your love. I wish coffee made your teeth whiter. I wish porn was good for your brain. I wish artists didn't need money. I wish billionaires were less vain. I wish cheese were not so expensive. I wish doing taxes was fun. I wish one night stands were romantic. I wish guys could come more than once. I wish ice cream made you more healthy. I wish weed was good for your heart. I wish exercise were less sweaty. I wish drinks were cheaper in bars. I wish we could all be less racist. And I wish the Bible made sense. I wish phones were not so addictive. And I wish we could have stayed friends. When our never meant to be relationship ended. All the life we lived in, now we're strangers again. All the time we put in, all the things that we've been. I wish I had known what I wanted, I wish you had never got mean. I wish we had started off honest, I wish I had made you feel seen. I wish you were less narcissistic, I wish I had known how to help. Wish you could have seen what I loved in you instead of hating yourself. I wish I had met you when COVID wasn't fucking up our whole lives. I wish both of us were less lonely from our months of staying inside. I wish I were more understanding. I wish you were way less intense. Maybe then you could still stand me. Cause I wish we could have stayed friends. When our never meant to be relationship ended. All the life we lived in, now we're strangers again. All the time we put in. All the things that we've been. Amazon were less evil, I wish climate change were a hoax, wish I didn't have to be sad as fuck to write my funniest jokes, I wish you would someday forgive me, I swear I was trying my best, and I know it wasn't an option, but I wish we could have stayed friends, when our never meant to be relationship ended, all the life we lived in, now we're strangers again, all the time we put in, all the things that we've been. Wish we could have stayed friends When our never meant to be relationship ended All the life we lived in, now we're strangers again All the time we put in, all the things that we've been I just wish we could have stayed Just wish we could have stayed
living your life is evading the day you die. We can make it to the race at the end of the finish line without hitting the brakes and stopping to see the signs. Cause whether you hate it or love it, everything changes. What is the cult of odd? Well, it's a little bit of and a little, but most importantly, it's about becoming one of us. You can join the cult every Friday night from 8 p.m. to 11 Eastern right here on tapdetroit.com or by heading to the cult of odd.com. Let us in. Let us fill you in. Join the cult of odd today. today. And we are back. You got songs from Ian McConnell. That was episode two, Friends, Bliss My Heart, Beyond, and Red, Hello Stranger. And now it is time for our brand new segment, Best Thing of the Week Ever, or Best Thing Ever This Week. <laughs> I fucked it up. <laughs> it's your first time. You're bound to make a few mistakes. Yeah, that's what I told her, too. <laughs> All right, so the idea behind the segment of best thing ever this week is we all have micro-obsessions or hyper-fixations that we go through from time to time, and we get really into something for like a week, and sometimes we don't touch it again ever, or we don't touch it again for months or, or whatever. So this segment is going to be dedicated to those hyper-fixations and those micro-obsessions that we have. The idea is that, you know, each week we'll probably have something that we're really into that week for whatever reason. And I would like you, the listener, to submit your own best thing ever this week. So you can do so by either emailing me or you can actually call our uh, uh, Cult of Odd phone line. Um, and leave a message. You can call 734-407-7674 and leave a message with your best thing ever that week. So I'm going to kick this off. My best thing ever this week is another podcast. And I know that seems counterintuitive as a podcaster to freely talk about all. another There's, podcast. Not at all. It's great. But it's a little weird. <laughs> it's a little weird. <laughs> this one... Okay, so I got up at 4 o'clock in the morning earlier this week. I want to say it was like Monday. And I I had to go shit. All right? So I get up out of bed and I grab my phone, as we all do, take our phones with us when we go to the bathroom. Because we need something to read and the aerosol cans aren't cover it, cutting it anymore. <laughs> um, so I went up there and I was doom scrolling Facebook, you know. <laughs> just not really paying attention. Just shitting and scrolling, shitting and scrolling. And I came across a Facebook ad for another podcast. It was called, it, it's called Download. Um, and that's spelled with a W instead of an A. All right. Um, and uh, they were talking about, you're five years younger than I am. You mm -hmm. might remember this website. I don't know. Okay. But the, the, First season that they've done on download is called The Rise and Fall of Harry Knowles and Ain't It Cool News. I don't remember that. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember that. So back in 1996, a website called Ain't It Cool News launched. And that website is the foundation and wholly responsible for websites today like Comic Book Report and Joe Blow and all of the content creators really? that um, talk movies and pop culture and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Ain't It Cool News is one of the first websites that started doing that. Harry Knowles um, was, well, he was a shitbag of a human, honestly, when it comes down to it. Because they, he, he, he was not a very good human. However, what he was good at is getting people on his side. 
and he had some 76 spies throughout the the movie and uh, <clears throat> predominantly movie industry, movie and TV industry, um, from high executives down to uh, just random people that saw a movie set and crashed it to, to send a report or to be able to say, hey, I was there. And so he had this network of people feeding him information about movies that were set to come out or movies that were being filmed or TV shows that were going on or or it, it runs the gamut. He was an avid movie nut himself. Like movies were his thing, still are to this day. Um and I I was that kid, you know. I I was super into movies. I was not allowed um as a child to go outside much. Mm -hmm. I was told I was allergic to the sun. Um I know that sounds crazy by the way, but I actually am. Uh, if I spend too much time in the sun, like we're talking like two hours and not completely covered in some way, um, not only do I get a sunburn, but I get little blisters that pop up after two hours. My skin doesn't like the sun. I don't know. I can tell. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, I don't have a, I'm not like allergic to the sun. I just prefer not to be in it for long periods of time. Right. Yeah. Well, but like, I have you... a little bottle of vitamin D because I don't go out in the sun. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, one, my mother always not told yet. me. Not yet. Not yet, crazy. Being out in the sun, my mother always told me, like, come back in the house, like, oh, you've gotten darker. I'm like, well, yeah, I can, you know, like, I went on a trip to Vegas and came back, and they swore I was purple. <laughs> wow. I'm like, no, I'm not that dark. Not yet. <laughs> well, anyway, so all I had was books and movies, okay? That's all I had to, to keep myself entertained. So, like, books were a way to, like go outside and play, essentially, because it was using my imagination. I I had read most of the works of Shakespeare before I ever left elementary school. Like, I read whatever you put in front of me. So H.G. Wells, Shakespeare, etc. And every movie and stuff, I, I was introduced to horror movies at a very, very young age. Um, and uh, so, like, movies, like, I was always keenly interested. So when Ain't It Cool News launched in 96, we had a computer in the house, and I was... I found it. I randomly stumbled upon it one day. Uh, 96, I would have been in my teens. Yeah. Um, you old fuck. Fuck off. <laughs> hey, my birthday's coming. Yeah, you can be mean to me all you want. Just buy me something. <laughs> did, you your, did you post your wish list? <laughs> yes. I, you know what? Last year, that was done because my brother told me to. Mm -hmm. This year, it was done again because my brother told me. Somebody hey, said I'm in the wish chat this is nice. that your nickname is no no fart at you. <laughs> God damn it, Craig. <laughs> that wasn't him. No, who was it? Oh, it is his birthday though. Yeah, actually, no, it was Rob. Fuck off, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go any further with the best thing, uh, this uh, best thing ever this week. Happy birthday to Craig from Player Two Connected. Happy birthday. All right, so. Hey, that's cool, Chris. Um, the wife uh, is getting herself to and from work now, so like, I can I can roll the dice and have a beer or eat a burger, and if I spend the next three days on the toilet, I'm not needed. <laughs> that's how I feel when I have ice cream. Yeah, that that's a Saturday part. morning thing for me. I love ice cream though. No anyway, what it does. My to me. body hates ice cream. Yeah, and I'm lactose, so. So I, I would read Ain't It Cool News and and um to to show you how fucking deep like his ties into the movie industry was. You remember the movie Starship Troopers? Yes, love that movie. Okay, me too. Uh Ain't It Cool <laughs> News and Harry Knowles was the first one to be able to release an image of the bugs. Really? He, he wasn't supposed to. Oh. Nobody was supposed to see them. Awesome. The movie studio hadn't released any pictures of it yet. And a spy got him the, the information mm. and he was able to release nice. it. The, so, only good bug, the only good bug's a dead bug. So the, the, basically <laughs> the, the, the point is um, he had a very deep inside look. And Ain't It Cool mm -hmm. News had a bunch of writers and stuff and they were all like, dropping information about movies and and like doing dissections of movies and things like that everything that there are a million content creators doing now ain't it cool news was doing in 96 well, anyways so back to the download download has an eight or nine episode series is their first season and it is a a 
documentary, essentially, on <clears throat> Harry Knowles and Ain't It Cool News. And so, like I said, I was doom scrolling at 4 o'clock in the morning while taking a shit, and I found it, and I was like, that's interesting. And I hit it, and Spotify opened up, and I, I finished my shit while listening. And it was good. <laughs> like it was, it was, it was the, the podcast, the not the okay, shit. Okay, okay. I, was like, I was going to ask because I felt like it was needed. The but podcast, you clarified not the it. Shit. Right. I mean, the shit wasn't bad either, but you know, kind of like you always feel better after a shit. Yeah. So. Breaking those cold baloney sweats. <laughs> now your your legs didn't go numb. You weren't on the toilet that long. No, <laughs> okay. no, no, no. I hate those times. <laughs> That's why I don't like, scroll like, TikTok. Oh, I gotta get out of here. Like <laughs> I might actually join you for that craze um so anyways it was good enough that like i turned the volume down a little bit and i came down the stairs to go back to bed now my wife is sleeping next to me and we typically fall asleep with the tv on anyways or something going because i need the noise to drown out the noise and for for those that can't see my hand motions i need the ear noise to drown out the brain noise <laughs> My think meat don't like to shut off and let me sleep, especially after I've just woken up, too. Like, the minute my eyes pop open, I'm fucking on. We're just running a mile a minute. <laughs> and so I was listening to this, and I walked over, and I, I laid down, and I took my phone, and I plugged it in. And I laid there for about an hour. Not because it was keeping me awake, but because I wanted to stay awake to hear more. What's the difference? There is a difference. No, there very much is a difference because, like, when your when your brain is trying to keep you awake, mm -hmm. you're just fucking. Oh, I wish I could sleep. Well, yeah. no, that's what I mean. Like, when I'm ready for bed, I go to bed. You know, if I'm listening to a show like that that, that keeps my interest, I, I'm not just awake. It's not yeah. keeping me awake. Yeah, she can't keep me awake. My brain can't. Except myself. No. I tried doing that with the boys, but I end up just paying attention and not sleeping. Yeah. So. Well, anyway, so I listened for about another for about an hour, and I was hooked. And so, like the rest of this week, I in the time that I've had where I've not had to listen to something else or or work on something that required audio, I've been going through the episodes. I am uh, starting episode four. There's bonus content in between stuff that they they. Didn't feel fit in the episode, but they didn't want to, like, not present. Um, so, like, I think there's episode one, and then there's bonus content. <laughs> and then episode two, and episode three, and then there's bonus content. Um, so there, there's actually more than just the nine episodes, but... So, like, I think I'm on episode four, and I'm I'm literally hooked, you know? I, I've not run across... A podcast or a TV show in a long time that has grabbed me to the point where I I'm trying to make time so I can listen. So I download, uh, like I said, with a W. Go find it. They're on Spotify. I know that. I think they're on several of the other platforms as well. Um, but that's my best thing ever this week is is because they're doing an oral history of the internet. That's the intent of the show. And as someone who grew up pre-internet and then internet coming into the house and then r with the internet i don't know man I, it's that old man like you kids back in my day you didn't know <laughs> well no in we 90, 96 him. i had aol and i was mostly at a site called antagonist outpost so like that was like my jam back then. I so what was the antagonist outpost? Um, it was a place where people could talk about games and comic books. It was just like AOL's version. Like okay. it's what was on the home screen. You click on games and oh, click like on so a group or something. It was like basically that. just a giant forum. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that's that was all my the first internet, experience internet was back then. Well, yeah. that's how it started. That that's <laughs> yeah. the, the very beginning. It was just a forum. My brother and I had uh, punters, so we could kick people off the and, internet. And that was cool. You know, I miss mm -hmm. those days. And believe it or not, that's how I learned how to hex edit hex edit games and, like, Game Shark mm -hmm. and yeah. stuff like that was from Antagonist Outpost. That's dope. So we were just on, like, um, we found a cool D&D &D forum that would let you Ooh. roll in the chat. And that Ooh. was the coolest fucking thing back then. Awesome. We're like, what? We could roll in the chat? Like, <laughs> See, I'm, I'm going to refrain from speaking world. on anything D&D &D related because my... Best thing ever is related to that. Oh, yeah? yeah. What's so, your best thing what, ever? What's your best thing ever this week? Okay. Hear me out. 
growing up, I was a huge, huge, huge Power Rangers fan. Yes. And just I mean, huge. who wasn't? Like, even now, I'm kind of a huge fan still. Like, I've met just about every single Power Ranger, you know? Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Well, I know that White Ranger will show up to the opening of a bag of chips, so Tell about Jason David Fr- Jason David Frank. But he's awesome. <laughs> I know. He's like he one is. of the most awesome people ever. It doesn't change the fact that he will show up to the opening of a bag of chips. To be fair, depending on the chips, I'd show up to a bag of chips, okay? So especially if it's kettle and barbecue or Hawaiian onion. Kettle are so good, so is Uncle Ray's. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Zappos. Sorry. Yes. Zappos are good, too. Okay. Anyway. So we're all fat here. Ranger or Yellow um, Ranger for you? Oh, I had the biggest crush on a Pink Ranger. See, everybody did, but I was a Yellow Ranger, man. Man, but I just... <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just... Yeah. Y'all she realize those colors heart. were she racist as heart. fuck, right? Oh, fuck yeah, well, do you were. realize that the Yellow Ranger in Super Sentai was actually a guy? Yeah, I yeah. saw that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But over here in the Power Rangers, they made it... A we didn't go woman. that. Some of us didn't go that far. Just... Okay. Uh, so anyway, I'm also a huge fan of D&D. Hell yeah. And to the point where I never really had a stable D&D group. I don't think anybody ever, ever does, yeah. man. Until Back then, it was different, though. Like, in the 90s, it yeah. was way different. We like, were younger and didn't have responsibilities. That was until I met, like, my previous my coworkers at my previous job. Uh-huh. And it's just me and management. Okay. Are the, we get together once a month. Sometimes we try for two times a month, but Talk once about a two, month. Talk only do one. For <laughs> D&D. Yeah. Well, anyway, I was browsing it YouTube, like, you know... I have been and diving more into the Power Ranger stuff. And our buddy Rob. I know it's was possible like, for me. Hey, Grace. have you checked out Power Rangers Hyperforce? I was like, you're speaking of some Power Ranger stuff I've never heard of. What do you mean? Like, what is this? And he was like, oh, it's a in lore canon D&D game called Power Ranger Hyperforce. I was like, what? That's dope. I'm like, how? The like, this sky is, opens like, this up. This is a thing? The chorus goes, you and hear I angels. I kid you not, like, I started watch. I started listening, well, on YouTube, there's so many, like, episodes, and they're long, and I started watching slash listening to it, and, oh my god, it's so good. And I'm, like, still binging through season one, because there's so many episodes, and I'm like, oh, um, so Andre, the black nerd, hmm. he's actually on that show. And I don't recognize the other people. Oh, and uh, Bulk. He is a character on the show. He's in their D&D group from Bulk and Skull from Power Rangers. Okay, Bulk, yeah. He's on the show. Um, and it's so good. I'm super addicted to this. And I'm like, this is the best thing ever. You combine Power Rangers of D&D and... I am. I was immediately hooked. I love it. Immediately hooked. Well, just so you know, and it's getting me currently. It's getting me through work. I'm sorry, but it's currently like getting me through work because I'll throw it on and I'll listen. And I, I get it. I get it. I'm probably like years off of when this was actually done, but the fact that I found this, I don't care how old it is. It's one of my favorite things ever. Yeah. <laughs> this week. Yeah. This week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Corey, you got one? I don't. I work so much. Sleep. Sleep so, is so like, his best thing ever this well, week. Okay, that's work might never be his best thing away, ever. Though, you know? <laughs> I am glad to be back. He's not micro show. obsessed with work, trust me. He's macro obsessed. Uh, the, the last thing I got real into, um, and it didn't last long, it was just like a couple nights of staying awake way that's too late. It's a micro obsession. Um, or cocaine it? high. Yeah. <laughs> I only ever did cocaine once for three months, all right? So. <laughs> It wasn't see, the cocaine. See, he I just didn't liked how it smelled. Three, I didn't expect the three months. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever I does. Was. <laughs> I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> you kind of hit us with that Spanish Inquisition. Yeah, we didn't expect that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, just so you know, Kraith in the chat room right now is local to, oh. to like this area okay. here. And uh, he is actually working on trying to get a D&D campaign together. Hey, I am always free for D and D. Doesn't matter. I I love D and D. That's fine. We both do, but yeah, that that's fine, Mister Brown. Um, uh, I got distracted by Mistborn. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was in the I, chat. I dive. Someone would play the Mistborn TTRPG with me. 
is what he said. Um, uh, I will bring you into Kraith's Discord. Okay. Um, and you can meet the, the Player 2 Connected team. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's that's the concept of the show, is is the best thing ever this week. It, we, it, we, we basically get to nerd out and geek out over one thing that we're super into that week. Mm-hmm. And if you at home have one, again, you can call us and leave it on our voicemail line. You get about three minutes, so you might have to make multiple calls. Um, we're working, I'm thinking of a way, like, to work in for patrons, um, a new thing, where is, if they have, uh, a tell me a story that they'd like to tell, or they have a best thing ever this week, and they, they don't want to be relegated to just the, the phone call, uh, because I'm changing how I'm doing the video editing and stuff, I am thinking of possibly adding in for most of the tiers, a way that you can get a hold of me through Zoom and we can talk and you can tell me your best thing ever this week uh, or you're telling me a story, you know, quote unquote live to me at that point. Mm-hmm. And I can take the audio and throw it in with the show. I like it. Yeah. yeah Give you. people a chance. The video can go into the YouTube. <clears throat> so Is I, it easy to split the audio from a Zoom yeah. recording? No, yeah. it does it automatically. Oh, nice. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it records. I love each, when things just work. It, yeah. It also <laughs> records each person on a, a a different track. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. I, I I'm I'm very very happy with that factor. Um, but yeah. So who knows? Uh, we want to. I I want to continue this. Um, I like it. Um, You're gonna get so many feet pics to your email address. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, send me your obsession, guys. <laughs> it's just gonna be pictures of Lady D. <laughs> Look, we do have a Discord forum, so I want you to be aware. Whatever you send me, like if you send me your body parts, like if someone has the audacity to send me a dick pic, I'm gonna draw a hat on it and I'm gonna post it in our Discord. Sweet, free artwork. I got you. <laughs> I'm going to go in. I'm going to save it. Now I got me a profile pic. <laughs> you mean a profile dick. <laughs> um, all right. So Craze actually sent us something um, that he wants us to get into, and we're going to do that. But first, we're going to take our next break. For those of you listening to The Fun Size, this is it for you. Your only hope to hear more is either to tune in live when we're doing this or sign up for the Patreon. You can go to patreon.com forward slash cult of odd. 